One of the problems we face in glaciology in particular, but also in other parts of physical geography and environmental science, is trying to work out where water is coming from and what routes it takes from its source to our point of measurement. Now, with glaciology, uh, what we're interested in is how quickly water moves through the hydrological system, uh, and that can tell us a good deal about the morphology of that system. So a technique commonly used is fluorescent dye tracing, where we would inject a fluorescent dye, uh, such as fluorescing, which is bright green, or rhodamine, which is pink, uh, into a moulin or a crevasse. We then install this instrument in the proglacial stream. This is a fluorometer uh, that can pick up minute quantities of fluorescent dye, uh, way beyond the human eye's ability to pick it up. Uh, so we'd leave this running attached to a data logger, inject our dye into the hydrological system on the surface of the glacier and record its output with the fluorometer. The concentration of dye coming from the glacier and the shape of the dye return curve uh, can tell us a good deal about the hydrological system. Now it's not the technique which you are likely to uh, be able to do on your own as part of an undergraduate project. Uh, you'd need obviously help from a supervisor and access to this sort of equipment, but it is possible to make an interesting project. Um, we're using it for a slightly different application. We've got this proglacial lake in front of the Fagletcher Glacier here in Switzerland. Uh, there are some concerns that waters from that lake are flowing through the moraine, which is damming that lake and holding it in place. And of course, what we're interested in doing there is seeing if those waters really are flowing through the dam, because if they are, there are possible implications for the long-term stability of that dam. Now just a word of caution with dye tracing, it's vitally important that you know what you're doing. The dyes are chemical, there are special precautions needed, uh, but perhaps more importantly, you need to get permission from the local authorities, because we're injecting a chemical. It is a harmless chemical, it degrades naturally very quickly, but we are injecting a chemical into water, so we need to make sure that's perfectly okay with local authorities. So uh, do check that first. Clearly for this sort of technique, you'll be working with your supervisor or, or a research scientist, uh, and they should be able to help you there. A very important point to remember. A fluorometer is used in order to detect dye. This detection is recorded using a data logger. You therefore need to build a gauging station to house the fluorometer. The fluorometer needs to be attached to the data logger. In order to get a correct reading from the data logger, it needs to be calibrated. It is therefore recommended that you seek help from your supervisor for this part of the process. Please refer to our Building Gauging Stations video that is also featured on the website. This video will take you through the steps involved in building a gauging station. Okay, we're, uh, we're up at the, the Fay Gletscher Pro Glacial Lake, which you can see uh, in the background. It's 6.48 in the morning, and we had a 4.30 start to get up here, uh, which is why you can't see any students here. They're all still in bed. There you go. Uh, anyway, we're going to do our fluorometry, our field dye tracing. Uh, here's the good old fluorescein uh, with uh, duct tape around it, central measure, another use for duct tape following on from our top tips stops it leaking or coming undone and the reason we've got up at 4.30 uh, is because we want to inject this dye uh, into some water which flows from this lake which we believe flows through the moraine dam and it flows through via subsurface routes uh, and we can see one potential access point over here uh, to my right uh, water is slowly trickling uh, through there that's where we're going to inject the dye and that's where we think these waters are flowing through the moraine dam and coming out uh, a few hundred metres downstream where we've installed the fluorometer. I'll show you that installation uh, a bit later on. So to prove that what we think is happening actually is happening, we're going to pour this fluorescein into the water. Uh, we've got a very small quantity here, uh, I think this is 100 mils. Uh, we've got the fluorometer running already. So that's logging automatically, it will pick up very small quantities of this, as I mentioned earlier, 0.1 parts per billion or thereabouts, and we'll see if our theory is correct, that waters from this lake are actually flowing underneath the surface and coming out uh, from the moraine down. As I mentioned earlier, that has 
potential implications for moraine dam stability if that water flow uh, is flushing out fine sediments which can lead to dam settlement uh, and obviously potential stability problems. Uh, essential safety kit using fluorescein, rubber gloves, uh, it's a fairly harmless substance but it does stain the skin very badly uh, so always wear rubber gloves and you probably can't see this on the video but what we've got is some eddy pools looks a bit like uh, water going down the plug hole of a bath and that's where we think uh, some of this water may be draining under the surface through this moraine dam and emerging on the downstream side so we're going to test that now by injecting the fluorescein Without further ado, let's pour it in. See, I'm just rinsing the bottle. We want to get all that fluorescein in there. We've got a fairly accurate measure here, 100 mils, 10% solution. And that's our fluorescein injected. The fluorometer is a sensor that measures the concentration of fluorescent particles in the water. This data is automatically received by the data logger. The largest number is rising in this footage in response to the dye in the water measured by the fluorometer. If the tracer emerges slowly, this can indicate dangerous fine-grained sediments. If the tracer emerges quickly, this can suggest that drainage routes are well established and therefore less dangerous. On returning from your field trip, you should plug the data logger directly into your computer, where the data will be transferred onto a spreadsheet, ready for analysis.